<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. Yeah. A lot, <laughs> a lot has happened since episode 53. As you guys know, we're going 53 to 52. Carly's gone through some changes. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I had a lot of mass gainer over the past couple of weeks, and then uh, some of my allergy medication turned out to be <laughs> testosterone, so, you know, that's a bitch, and <laughs> went and got some tattoos, but yeah, otherwise doing pretty well. She looks really good. She really does. She's in a lot better shape than me, and her tits are smaller than mine, which is, and he's doing the jiggle. <laughs> That's unsettling so much. You don't like it when your wife jiggles? <laughs> leave, a, <laughs> leave a comment down below. Um, if your wife could make their nips move, would that be a... Would that be a is, that, is that what you call them? Breasts? Is that, uh, pectorals. Pectorals, okay. <clears throat> I don't think anyone has ever said it that way. Uh, doctors. <laughs> <laughs> You. Has anyone ever asked you to make your nips wiggle? <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Too many. And, okay. Where he touched. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you guys can tell, this is not the normal 52, and this is why we did 53 first. And as Carly, my wife, in the background, is actually busting her guts out. When this airs with the magic of editing you'll see that we were able to have our normal intro and that's why we're not doing this as a live stream this is a big shindig and we're basically just going to go until all of our stories are told that alcohol is done and i feel like i have no self-worth left as a human being uh we which haven't is about done right. that over the past 20 years oh, yet god no i've built up a resistance to oh, it okay it takes time a lot of cutting but we get through it and so we're gonna do our intros here this is not carly bird and his nips don't wiggle oh <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm Seth Garland, and my nips don't wiggle. For a minute there, I thought he wouldn't introduce himself. We were just going to <laughs> Matt. <laughs> just going to let him go. Um, and then to his right, or left. left, his left, my right. I'm Matt. <laughs> I don't know if my nips wiggle. <laughs> have not tried yet. Did you, did you want to like give it any more intro who you are or like anything else while you're here? I think that was rock uh, solid. Yeah. Okay, we're good? Okay. Okay. <laughs> As you can tell, he's acting right now like we just like kidnapped him off the street against his will. Just staring like, oh, if I say this, can I go home? <laughs> Excited to be here. Like blinking Morse code. <laughs> Alex, help me, please. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah. And so as you guys know from a little like live stream we did that aired, of course, before this, you know, you know, Seth's story. He's going to be reading tonight. I'm going to be reading tonight, of course. And then Carly, we're going to have a special episode too. We're reading tonight. This is to celebrate one year. We only missed four weeks out of a whole year of doing Spirits and Ghost Stories, which is absolutely asinine that we did that. It's crazy. We're at 4,000 downloads about that, which is super awesome. And to all my new listeners for Fishing the DMV, thank you guys. We just hit 50,000 downloads on that channel, which is amazing that that's doing so well. Thanks again for crossing over this channel. It's really fun. and We'll keep seeing where all this thing goes. And hopefully we can get a bigger place in this shitty basement. <laughs> hopefully that we have all this stuff in. Hey. Hey, it is a fantastic you studio. would love to have more space or at least to have a normal house and not me. Yeah, that's what I thought. So anyway, we're going to kind of get into it today. We're going to be telling, a, I will be telling a story, then Seth is going to be telling a story. Is that correct? And then you have a scary stuff in the news. And then Matt is here to lay down his wisdom. I can't read. I couldn't bring a story. <laughs> so just here to react. Um, the host can't read either. I'm not sure if you're new to the program. Oh, a good point though. So <clears throat> we know each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> so i'm a little drunk um so that's the whole reason we're doing this we thought we'd bring on some other special guests we didn't know like of any paranormal investigators so i thought like, you know, fuck it let's just bring everybody Close on that enough. i know well ironically that can be a little enough me. we're getting into that actually in the next year we're going to start our new uh ghost busting company bullshit hmm. what is it called g busters <laughs> set up Okay. <laughs> Ghostbusters was taken. <laughs> there were some copyright issues. Didn't want to get into the lawsuit. So what do you guys know about witches? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. We only know about busting ghosts. And rhinos. Uh, <laughs> they don't they don't float. <laughs> what G G's don't float? No, witches. witches no, don't if float. they float, they're a witch, right? <clears throat> Because in the Salem Witch oh, Trials, yeah, it's yeah, the ones yeah, who sunk to right. the bottom yeah. weren't witches. See? I guess I don't know that much. 
that that'll be our side business once we get the ghost or sorry g busting up and running <laughs> it'll be the w busting <laughs> can't wait to g and w bust with you buddy <laughs> looking forward to it we're very popular at you know like what do they call it for uh, bridal showers not bridal showers bachelorette parties it's a bridal shower would be actually a little bit weird for that which busting is popular before bachelorette no, no, parties? No, G, the G force. Oh, G busting. Yeah. Ah, because you're busting out a G string. Yeah, that's what Tommy thought of right away. I was thinking of something else, but that's perfectly fine too. Anyway, to get back on track on this whole thing, because we're gonna have a lot of distractions tonight, but this is fun. We're just having a celebration. We're just busting balls. Um, which? <laughs> no, we're busting G's. G spots or G's, G's and W's. And then we'll consider balls. Are we teaching hooked on phonics? Because it's not going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm past saving. This is your gear, like, way of subtly, like, sliding that in there. And with that, <laughs> let's hear you read. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get started today. But first, Matt, what are we drinking? Some pina coladas. Got some rum in them. I don't know what else to <laughs> say about it. They're lovely. Um, <laughs> Diplomatico rum. Oh shit, we don't have a the nice, bottle. Uh, yeah. We will have that edited in here for the next thing, but we have rum in a cup with pina colada on top of it. Uh, that's called the oil slick, I think, when you do it that way, when you don't mix it. I don't know what it's called. It's good, though. Anyway, so that'll get polished up in post-production. <laughs> um, Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> witches are a really big, cool thing on the channel. Um, Appalachian Witchcraft has close to 1,000... Hey, you stole my thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Appalachian Witchcraft has a huge following. Tons of people love it. It always series gets into the culture, but we we wanted to kind of start with a really good witch story. Have you guys busted bust through of it? And always when I tell my story, we're gonna start. <laughs> See, G Buster. <laughs> <laughs> guys, Still if I had, go with it. <laughs> if I had the budget, I'd have a camera facing her too. <laughs> but we're out of cameras. Um, we're talking about oh yeah, witches. So anyway, with the witches that we were about to talk about. We're going to get into the background first, which everyone likes, and then me speaking, which 50-50 people actually do like, don't like. So, witches. Um, and we talked about this over dinner. I'll fill Matt in on kind of our whole, like, shindig of that thing is, what is the idea when you think of a witch? Matt, go first. Uh, oh, that's a tough question. Um, a witch is either someone accused of just doing some things other people can't explain or it's someone that's you know tapped into another kind of energy Seth? <clears throat> well i guess i gotta go with carly's answer which is just a old hag looking woman with the long <laughs> nose uh well Rhino. actually no <laughs> Rhino. no uh ironically enough i feel like Nowadays, I, I just he's gonna think just of, say exactly what I just said beforehand in the last week. No, I th <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be a really long history lesson <laughs> to give again. Um, I think of like folks who practice like the Wiccan, mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff. I don't know if they actually call themselves witches or not, but that's kind of what I think of now. Well, so really, the witch has a real cultural meaning to it. If you go back to the ancient times, which is really the Middle Ages, let's just start right there. Um, a lot of times, women didn't really live longer than the man you know as seth as you put pointed out before and then biology also has this assessment here that that women didn't always live that long if they got through childbirth if they got through that first phase of their 20s there were a few that would actually live past men at that point so it's such a weird um it's such a weird statistic where if women hit a certain age which is usually past their their 40s generally speaking they would outlive men and this is back before medicine was a thing whatever and you also have to think about war and things like that that really would take the male population. So what does this mean? You would have a couple of women that would live longer than their men, and they'd become really the hierarchy of their tribes. Well, then you're going to take this with necessary truths of different religions. So picture this. If you have Catholicism, which is really big in Europe, and you go into these tribes of Celts, and you'd see that there would be this one old lady there that lived past most of her peers. She has a lot of knowledge that she's passed down. She's seen things. She's seen plagues. She's seen different crop cycles go through. She has a lot of wisdom. And we see this play over tons of movies where this happens. And it's also still in a lot of cultures, like the Italian culture. When you think of the mafia, there's always this one matriarchal woman that resides over the family. Well, that is something that's just passed down through cultural generations. And what you find out happening is these women have a lot of knowledge of how to survive certain things, whether it's an illness, a plague, 
how to heal things. I mean, all of our moms, generally, if you have a mom, I'm sorry if you don't, um, have been out. Oh, wait, what? I was trying to be like nice. <laughs> <laughs> we like men and fathers too, and women. Um, we like all here at Spirits and Ghost Stories. We like everything. We don't care what you are. <clears throat> no. What? Why'd you make this sound weird? <laughs> we also love rhinos. <laughs> But anyway, so what this gets back to is the fact that they would have some kind of truth that was passed down through generations. And the one thing we got in with, with Carly was the fact that in some religions, it's weird. Like, why don't you eat pork? Or why don't you eat certain crustaceans and things like that? Not rhinos, not rhinos. <clears throat> and there's some biblical teachings in the Old Testament and the Quran of reasons you shouldn't eat this. <clears throat> but then scientists also say like, well, there's another reason here too. It's like, if you don't cook this properly, you would die. Well, that gets taught by the elders of the tribe that, okay, if you eat pork, you don't cook it right, you die. So maybe that's one reason it's like that. You don't eat this herb because you could die and that gets passed down. And who's going to pass down this knowledge? It's going to be the elder. It's either going to be the elder man or it's going to be the elder woman of the tribe. And this is really, I think, where the cultural significance of what the witch is. But then what happens is you get this push of Catholicism. And so as people know, you know, Rome pushed the Celts out of main Europe, pushed them into to Ireland and Scotland. Ireland really became the last bastion of the Celtic um, culture. And if you know from like the Snallygaster episode, where we really talked about the dragon mythology. That was really a Celtic thing that the Catholic church and that religion like got a hold of. And then that kind of blended together to give us the dragon. And so this is my hypothesis of where the witch comes from. And then when you guys look at like the Appalachian witchcraft and stuff, you get an old woman that lives out in the woods by herself and she's seen a lot and she has herbal remedies that's against maybe what people at the time believe is normal and you're like that's a witch because it's it's unknown and so that really sets the tale for this this story here i feel like too when you mentioned like the old woman who lives in the woods there's also that fact of like <clears throat> be it telephone game or something like that where just the legend sort of creates telephone, itself. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. It could just be an old woman trying to live <clears throat> peacefully in the woods, but then kids are like, oh, have you heard about like the woman who lives in the woods? Yeah. And so that kind I of feel builds. Like a lot of our American understanding of witches comes from the Salem period where it's such a negative mm -hmm. connotation, but everything <clears throat> you just described is just some badass <laughs> ladies oh, living out through the history and knowing <clears throat> things and passing it on to the next. But where did the Salem come from? Where the Puritans, where the Puritans come from, England. And Christianity. Or, or Christianity, yeah, absolutely. And it's so weird how it's almost like, what is it, like to the victor goes to spoils. And so when you have the one that comes in there and sees all these tales and stuff, and then you're right, like you initially see it, and then over the years, things get adjusted. So Carly is all screaming, we talked about the Snallygaster. Well, dragon is scary. What is What probably was a Snallygaster? It was probably like an eagle hawk or a golden eagle that got loose here. And if you were a Scott guy drinking moonshine, you saw a six-foot hulk. That was scared the living fuck out of you. You saw that on and you, you couldn't explain it. Okay, that's that's a dragon. If you have a woman that heals somebody, probably they're like, hey, wash your hands. And they're like, oh, that's pretty crazy. And it works. You're like, that's that's a witch right there. Yeah. And it's like, it's so weird to think like also this thought that people were really stupid back then. And, and like, and I don't mean that in a weird way. It's like, you ever saw the movie like Idiocracy where the guy gets transported into the future? You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Oh, yeah. One of my favorite movies. Yeah. Okay. So I just love that because like, well, if you go back in time, it'd be the same way. We're like some of the things we do that are common sense now, people will literally work, look at you and be like, yeah, you're a sorcerer or something like that. And that to me is so crazy to think about. I don't know why, but to wrap my head around that, like just such common sense things. I'm like, I don't know. One I love from the Black Plague episode that we're doing is like people would take pigeons and pluck them and then stick them in the pus filled wound because they thought that would actually fix it. Uh, how <laughs> too, like, yes to suck out the bag blood right but i mean that's just the natural cycle of like human man like you're ideally going to learn things and each generation should get smarter or else you're going people backwards. thought rubbing shit in a wound would help who that's thought an interesting thought too because it's just that implies there's a bunch of stuff that we know now that is not true yeah think about people who like i don't know 100 years from now they might think we were just absolutely the dumbest people on the planet they were, we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we right now are the dumbest people in the next 100 years and that'll be on a t-shirt we are the dumbest send <laughs> time now for the tale of the bell witch haunting <laughs> i lived in adam tennessee growing up from the age of 14 to 18 2004, 2008, if you want to be precise. A couple of weeks after my family and I moved there, something unexpected happened. 
I was mowing on my dad's tractor with a big eight foot wide back end mower. I was going down a hill when my horizontal line velocity was thrown around as a tractor tries to hit something. That's a weird fucking way to talk to yourself. Like who talks okay. to yourself like Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory? Their horizontal line velocity was thrown off. Their tractor was trying that to hit That is what's something? written here. Fair enough. I, <laughs> I disengaged the mower and pulled the tractor around at the base of the hill I had gotten just down. My blood went cold as I looked through the swath I had just cut, like a buzzer going down the middle of someone's head making a lane in the grass. In that lane were four Native American burial graves. My parents started reaching. I thought that was about to be a lot worse. <laughs> the tractor hit something. In the line was four Native Americans. I just went <laughs> over with the tractor. <laughs> That seems odd, but like immediately identify as that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know that they were there? <sighs> and I guess not. how did the trigger? Like, no, how did the track? Wait, so it was four Native American burial ground? Like, it, was it, it says, like essentially gravestones? My, <laughs> I'll read it again because again, guys, this is me reading, so <clears throat> we do have to double check it. Okay, um, I was going down a hill when my hor's horizon, my horizon line, my horizon. H O R I Z O N. Horizon. Yeah, horizon line violently was thrown around as a tractor. Did you say the fucking okay. tractor was yeah, shaky? No, no, so what he's saying is, you know, he's yeah. staring this way. Can I get my glasses? He's riding the tractor. To it's a blurry screen. And then he hits something and it's like bouncing it's him. And so his, like, if you is imagine your view straight, I thought it was a shit. I was going. He, she, person. <laughs> I lived in Alabama, tractor. No, it doesn't say anything. Tennessee. Okay. Too. Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> I lived in Adams, Tennessee. So All yeah, right. we're, we're good. So they ran over. Yeah, uh, I pulled the tractor around at the base of the hill. I had just gone down my, when my blood went cold. As I looked through the swath I had just cut, like a buzzer going down the middle of someone's head, making a lane in the grass. In the lane were four Native American burial graves. So yeah, you just ran over some dirt. My parents started reaching out to anyone who might be able to help us identify the graves. Anthropologists, historians, academic individuals from the local university. Why can't I say those words easily, but not horizontal? Those people unanimously agreed that these four graves were from the Trail of Tears. The Trail of Tears was back when Andrew Jackson was the president of the United States, and he made all the aboriginal individuals leave the East Coast towards settlements in Oklahoma. They corroborated this from what I remember because of how the graves were laid. Very, very shallow. Well, like just because they're on a rush. That doesn't, like, I don't understand. Okay. With, with a giant slab of stone. The point they we're on the move. So does, does that mean every shallow grave is basically like, all right, trail of tears. That's clearly, anyway, sorry. I don't know why that, that threw me. I was like, ah, whatever. Huh? Yes, it's on the live stream. You've never checked this before. You should just come downstairs, read, drink, and leave. Sounds like a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> they corroborated this from what I remember because of how the graves were laid, very, very shallow, with a giant slab of stone where gravestones would be. The fact that they were interred, interred, intern, interned, oh, interned, um, interned, not interred. Why would you interrogate a hill? <laughs> They were interned on the hillside to keep the water from sinking in. That makes more sense. Again, <laughs> raising the bodies since they had to bury them so quickly and many other reasons. Okay, we don't want to know the reasons either. I consider myself a very logical driven and rational minded person. Yeah, when you say horizon, when you have a bumpy road, that makes sense. Basically, I let my empirical sense try to explain something before I'll open myself up to other possibilities. Yet, there were things that that happened to me and my whole family that weren't able to rationalize with the scientific mindset of any logical individual. Event number one, the activity. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> the activity in our house started shortly after the mowing incident. <laughs> the mowing incident. We heard heavy knocking and 
pounding. Did they ever before? Like, yeah, did apparently. they not know these graves were there before? Is this the first time mowing that part of the yard? Apparently. They really proud of that one stripe that they mowed down. <laughs> I got one stripe done. <laughs> Probably honestly scared to mow around it because there might be more. And then my horizon was lifted. Uh, <clears throat> the activity in our house started shortly after the mowing incident. We heard heavy knocking and pounding on the brick outer wall of the house. Encircling the house, no matter where we were in that house we could hear the knocking from all around hmm. some that would actually though whether it's That's, sorry pause that would be scary at first but god how quickly did that get annoying <laughs> <laughs> well that's honestly impressive because if you've ever knocked on brick it doesn't make like a that's not brick <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't make a really loud noise i got no brick you know? to knock on so yeah so it's like interesting if, word choice knock because it's hard to get a knocking sound on it. Yeah, like the fact that they're able to hear it so well, like that alone is like, okay, maybe something not natural is going on here. <clears throat> but how scary would that be? How long until it went from scary to like annoying? Oh, very, very quickly. soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, every time you got a clap, and they knock and it throws off your your timing for the podcast. Could you horrible. imagine, like, still working with that? Like, at some point, you're just over it, raising kids, and you have families over, and it's like you just deal with it, and you're so over it. Like, everyone else is freaking out. You're like, ah, oh, it's fine. Well, I think this kind of circles back to most <clears throat> ghost stories, where how long do you let it last before you move? I'm That's pretty a- sure after, like, a week of just nonstop knocking, I would have left. It wouldn't take long. <laughs> I probably keep like it depends on the mortgage stuff. We're not getting into a mortgage argument here, but I'd probably stay. (laughs) There we go. Mad set for my own heart. Start knocking back. (laughs) And then Alex, (laughs) because I'm up in the middle of the night knocking back. Some nights I would hear. Some nights I would hear running footsteps accompanying the pounding. My God, that would be annoying. (laughs) This honestly just sounds like kids ding dong ditching. Yeah, I have cats. This sounds like every day. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. The activity happened nearly every night. As the night passed, I started feeling a heavy presence in my room, a suffocating one, like a heavy weight sitting on my solar plexus consistently. Who the fuck talks like this to themselves? When whatever whatever was happening decided to latch onto me. The event number two. I'm sure what that means. Can we dive into that? Yeah. That's the end of that event? Yeah. Just latched onto? Yeah. So they're hearing knocking, they're hearing footsteps, and they feel someone latching on to them. Like a piggyback ride? Like you're Their walking down the hall solar plexus. Seth? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor. <laughs> solar so like the sternum area? I think he's having a heart attack. And it's like they're right in the sternum. So they're feeling Got it. So it's the Iron like Man someone part. is latching right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's weird. That's just another word. <laughs> <laughs> you fit right in with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I here? Who are you guys? And I love like right now you guys are listening to this at home and you have this really eerie music playing over what I'm saying right now with everything else going on. Oh God. Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna refocus here. Things continued to escalate after my solar complex was compromised. Who writes this? One night, I was letting my golden retriever out to go pee. Oh, God. We had a ranch-style house overlooking the Red River. The doors we were exiting was upon the backside of the house facing the river. As I opened the door, I start hearing faint whispering, something akin to leaves being blown slash scratched across the ground. I looked up at the trees to see the wind was glowing. Everything was us uh, blowing. <laughs> the wind was blowing. Let's see, there's a whole nother issue if the wind is glowing. <laughs> <laughs> the uranium fallout from Kiev. Uh, everything was perfectly still. It was fall in Tennessee, so tons of leaves on the ground. They were not moving either. The scratchy blowing leaf noise continued, but as it continued, it grew closer and louder. It sounded like a language of some sort. Like, how do you imagine an ancestral chant would begin, or something nefarious in the tone of the sound? I looked down at my golden retriever. All of the hair on her back was standing up, and she was snarling like a rabbit wolf. Yet not barking, just kin of frozen and fear 
to the response of what was happening. I stared, getting extremely nauseous, and you could smell. What was that smell? Is that sulfur? I was completely frozen when my dog launched herself through the door's threshold and started gnarling her teeth mid-air, snarling and chomping. It's a golden retriever. This is a badass golden retriever. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> always trust the animal. <clears throat> you know, always trust the animal. Yes, guys, if you know this thing, always trust the animal. Go the opposite direction of what the animal's saying. If the... I've learned anything from watching Supernatural, it's one, <clears throat> Jared Padalecki is a very attractive man, and two, sulfur smell is not a good thing. Get out of here. <laughs> The boys. I'm the new host here. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one. <laughs> but the boys, season three, he's actually really good in that too. The voices were now coming from directly in front of me. I could hear them as if someone was standing there a foot or two away. I grabbed my dog midair and pulled her quickly inside, slammed the door and threw the deadbolt into place. The door in the frame shook violently as a vicious pounding started hammering on the threshold. I ran with my dog to the center of the house, flipping on every light along the way. We sat there alone all night until the sun came up. Ginger, my golden retriever, laid across my lap the entire night, pressing into me while she whimpered for hours and hours on end. All I could do was pet her and try to calm her down, which was also helping me down-regulate myself. And who the fuck talks like this? This was impossible, though. The entire night until sunrise, the back door was thumping. Thump, thump, thump. Event number three. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's hard to say what you're going to do in fear, but like, let's be honest, a deadbolt and some lights. What are those going to do against, like... What would you do? Hard to say, but, like... Okay, okay well, you know what you're not going to do confront this you know you gotta so get you, under the covers if you get yeah, under the covers you're, you're fine <laughs> so seth is getting under the covers matt is taking his rum and walking outside like hey let's talk well, this out so besides the dog you know snarling because again gotta always trust the like animals instincts even the weird whispering so far it sounds like kids playing ding dong ditch and leaves <laughs> rustling in the wind yeah. but the whispering in the dog that's so. Yeah, that's the, we're going to circle back to that at the end of the story because that, that's something I want to talk about. Also, interesting word choice when she was said there's an ancestral chant that she just thought is nefarious. That's that's an interesting connection that, that is racist already has that like anything <clears throat> that's not familiar to them, nefarious. That is racist, racist. yeah. You see a black <laughs> person just talking, yeah. Well, it's probably just the emotions running, so you're going to connect that to what you're hearing is something spooky or nefarious. So to be fair, to be fair, if I'm in the middle of the night in the middle of the woods and I hear anything, that is nefarious. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be like... Well, I don't know. Spooky isn't necessarily nefarious. You can yeah, be scared true. of something, but that doesn't mean that that thing is necessarily <clears throat> evil. And, and... True, true. We're, yeah. But you go with the animal's instincts. So if the animal is upset, then maybe it is something nefarious. Can animals be racist? Yes. Just really? I mean, they can have preference on who they like. And Was that racism? Like. I guess it maybe probably isn't with an animal because they're not consciously doing it for any... I guess they would be species us. Event number three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of tangent that was. Um, it happened when I was coming home from a football practice one night. I had all my gear in a gym bag over my shoulder. This is important because of how I entered the house. As I closed the front door behind me, I began sitting down the gear bag from my left side, which caused me to look right. The room when you walk in was our library, where we had our leather couch, chair, piano, bookshelf, and wooden rocking chair that smelled of rich mahogany. I added that. <laughs> there was something sitting in the rocking chair, though, that really caught my eye. My peripheral vision caught it first. The chair was going back and forth. As my vision centered on the chair, there was a humanoid looking silhouette or figure sitting there, head glancing down downward at the book it was holding, long black hair drawn down over its head and completely void of light. To picture what I saw, imagine the silhouette of a person, but rather a void of light. The light coming in around the edge of it seemed to be eaten up 
by the presence of void as this light spilled over the contour edge of the humanoid shape, like how a black hole are visualized. Say that. So you've got a black hole just sitting in your library. So it's like the story's all right. Black hole reads. <laughs> say what book they are reading. <clears throat> a brief history of time as they've been talking. <laughs> it's actually the call of Cthulhu, but that's fine. Um, it, it felt like I had jumped off a bridge into ice cold waters. I blasted myself backwards against the door, screaming, and fell down. And as I was falling, I saw the void blur. Suddenly, as soon as I shot across the walls of the house and out through a huge bay window overlooking the river, my golden retriever was in the next room and she sprinted to chase down the shadow across the walls, barking and clawing at the walls. After it left through the window, my dog came to me and laid on my lap until my parents got home. Event 4. I was fishing with my cousin Jack on the river by our house. We were right on the bank of the river so the moon would be shining on both sides of the river, racing out at two lines, like a 90 degree angle from the house. Super beautiful when we weren't on the, on the edge. The reason I bring this up, there was a lot of light on the river that evening. Jack was about 10 or so at the time. He reached up and tapped me. Does that lady need our help, you think? I looked at, to where he was pointing, and there was a pale woman dressed in white clothes, going back and forth, picking up stones just to the left of us across the river. I had seen her many times before around the property, and whenever I would get close, she would disappear behind a tree or something similar would happen. Nope. Okay. How did this not make it in the first couple of <laughs> appearances? <laughs> Knowing this, I told I told Jack calmly as I could that it was time for dinner and he needed to go up to my mom immediately in an attempt not to scare him. When I walked him up and made sure he was on his way, I looked back over and saw that she was gone, but I could hear a splashing in the water below. Event number five. My dad and I and his friends and some other family members were, were staked out along the river bend on the gravel bar beneath the rise in our house. Nothing out of the ordinary at first. It was July 4th and we were having an actually good time for a change. We were all what? spreading. <laughs> what? That on the July 4th. Uh, I kind sound, of wonder what happened on previous July 4th with this family <laughs> that they're finally having a good time. Oh, sounds like my family. <laughs> we were all spread out about 15 yards from each other. Each man had a low end Okay, that's okay. I thought I was okay. Read that, read, read that wrong. Each man had a low end gas Coleman lantern. As the sun was setting, my dad looks over at me like something was bugging him. He told me later he felt like someone had just thrown a bucket of ice water over him before it began. The sun had just gone down when it happened. An illusion, all in, in unusion, in Yunshan. In Yunshan, unison. Oh, in unison, all the lanterns. <laughs> there you go. In unison, all the lanterns. There you go. Drink, guys, at home. In unison, and all the lanterns were cranked up at full blast. Then, just as quickly, it became barely a flame, and then snap, they all went out, and then right back on. And the fires roared to life again, down to barely a flame. Roared to life again. Then they went completely out. Right as the flames went out, we heard the most godforsaken scream by some woman across the river. Whatever it was kept on screaming despite our best attempts to call out for help. Her scream reached a, a crescendo, if you will. It sounded like I could only imagine a person's throat being cut and blurred with blood. The sound of the dead weight fall of a human body tumbling down the hillside across from us and splashed finally into the water. At this point, all the guys had their flashlights and shotguns ready. That's when something started swimming and splashing around. It is Tennessee. <laughs> something splashing around in the water on both sides of the river. The splashing receded towards the opposite gravel bar. And whatever it was got out and started packing back and forth across, packing, pacing, pacing back and forth across the rocks right there. We were pointing all of our flashlights to where the sound was coming from. But we couldn't, 
<laughs> I couldn't identify. No, you know the shock. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't identify where it was originating from. It's safe to say we were running up the hill at this point. We all got inside the house, locked the door, and then gathered in the central living room. We told tales and drank some shine. No bodies wanted to leave for fear of what was going outside. <sighs> we all stayed up that night because the walls kept pounding violently and scratching. Then more than ever before. And then bam, 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 it found like the walls were starting to tumble in all night, like the ticking of some demonic clock. I didn't sleep for two days after this event. Event number six, lost time. I was walking through the woods near Bell Witch Cave one moment and was one moment it was completely sunny and blue skies. It was roughly about midday. But then all of a sudden I felt this dizziness in my head, like pounding migraine that started. And all of a sudden I, I felt like I blacked out. And the next moment it was like overcast. I was, I was shocked and I looked down at my watch and it read 4 p.m. How long was I out here for? Did I pass out? Event seven. The night hold terrors. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> he willingly walked into Bell Witch Cave after these other five events have gone on and all this. Yes. He's seeing a woman in white, like by this pond or Getting her river. throat slit and she rolls down like, uh, into the water, gets out. Known moonshine drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Wakes up in a cave, doesn't know how they got there. Uh, that, that, that's a key part I think, of the story. It's just like the town's drunk who kids are messing with by pounding on his house. And I do love the idea of in the South, like they hear this woman tumbling and everyone's just goes, Ch -ch -ch, and just like, <laughs> point right there. Well, to be fair, that was probably their homemade fireworks, and so they, they had them at the ready. I do love like, the idea of the 4th of July in Tennessee, so you got to bring a shotgun, too. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. And, okay, so the fact that they're bringing shotguns to a 4th of July celebration, and this is the first good one, tells me there was an accident in the years prior with these shotguns that made them bad 4th of Julys. <laughs> really got to make sure we got at least one. It's like that tradition of, like, guys who knife. If a knife is needed, just this family does it with shotguns. Because you never know when you're going to need a shotgun. Wise words. Yeah, and for never. all of our... Yeah. <laughs> uh, huge shout out to all. Yeah. Can't think of any instance where maybe a shotgun would have come in handy. No. Okay. <laughs> wait, what is that? I was like interested. Like, wait, what was this a story that happened that I didn't know about? <laughs> See, we were in China and this, this incident that happened. Anyway, night terrors. Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think of when we were in China if there was any moment where a shotgun would have been. I don't know. If, were, <laughs> if we had a shotgun, it would have made anything worse. A lot of things worse. <laughs> or better, depending on your, your viewpoint. <laughs> so, event seven. <laughs> Night terrors. Tortured dreams. Being held down and brutally drawn and quartered. These were all the things that were rushing through my mind. Dreams of walking through a house and the void. Person, places, their head on my chest. They were pounding, pushing right through my solar plexus. My body violently shaking in the dream, like having a seizure. Event 8. Visiting the. So that's like. The fact that he's having dreams, that could be like. All this stuff is happening and manifest that. Or he's so, drinking way too much. <laughs> also, like. Uh, our friends who suffered from sleep paralysis. They say part of sleep paralysis is that you manifest that. Foreshadowing. And <laughs> uh, this one individual who had it happen to him said they felt someone like crawling next to them and then laying on them. So this person could just have gone through these six other events and like is manifesting this in their own dreams. Just like somebody we know. <laughs> Huge shout out to you, Mark Blair. All right. Visited. Shout out Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Visited the Bell House Plantation, make, maker of the greatest tobacco in all of Tennessee. We got to the plantation marker in the tobacco field adjacent to my family's property, brought fields to try and prove that something crazy was happening to my family. The rite of passage in the area is to go to the stone maker where the paranormal events happened hundreds of years ago. 
been danced on the stone saying, I don't believe in the Bell Witch. I don't believe in the Bell Witch. So to make sure we recap at home, in this town, the best tobacco is made in Tennessee. The rite of passage is in the area is to go to the stone maker where the paranormal events would happen hundreds of years ago. Then you need to dance on the stone. I'm assuming this is in the middle of town square because I like that in my head. And so in the middle of town square, you have to sit there or stand there and dance. And you say, I don't believe in the bell witch over and over again. It's a good town. <laughs> so the police explains why he willingly went into the bell witch cave. He doesn't believe in it. <laughs> it's been brought to you by Jack Daniel. Um, I got them to promise that they wouldn't do that while we went. Of course, the moment we got there, one guy would dub the legend in a massive way, jumps up onto the stonemaker and starts screaming, I don't believe in the Bell Witch, I don't believe in the Bell Witch, as loud as he could. I got so upset at him, I'm the only one that knows the way back, so I said, come on guys, we're leaving. In this area, it's known as the Tennessee River Valley. So there's tons of flowing water and rivers and creeks and old tobacco fields. The reason this is important is because of what happens next. We're making good time walking back across the crop fields hundreds of yards along. A mist randomly starts rolling in from the river bend and begins to saturate the field. The temperatures drop easily by like 25 degrees and we start seeing our breath. I begin to smell something rotten is that sulfur? Is that sulfur in the breeze? As the mist bega became fog, I started hearing this wheezing and deep cavernous sounding breath around us. Like being inside a cave that was, that was alive. Out of nowhere, we started hearing these giant blast sounds and I realized something was walking on like the chopped tobacco stalks that were behind us. When you step on the side, <laughs> sorry, so you guys like, look, it's like, is, is it over? Is it over? Sorry. I'm so nervous. Oh, all right. This starts happening all around us, like an army of native spirits running backwards and forwards through the whoa, socks. Whoa, crunch, whoa, crunch, whoa. crunch. What well, made them native? All of a sudden, it just went from nothing into native. This all feels like a very preconcepted <laughs> idea that this person I had. mean to be fair he did mow over like three graves so I think that's that where was this event one way long ago okay this is this is true this is true and now all of a sudden in this river valley yeah, I know so what this should be is like probably three Mexican graves hmm. that's when I hear it this deep cavernous noise turns into a giant sniffing sound like some Lovecraftian beast smelling its prey just out of eyesight at this point, I yell, run! Pure panic mode inflicts all of us as we sprint across the tobacco field. We take off across the field, trying not to trip on any of the skewed stalks. They dry out and get really sharp when they haven't been harvested. Also, Robinson, also in the Robinson County is the world's largest producer of tobacco per square mile. So these fields are everywhere. As we are ex exiting the field, our feet hit the gravel road. The lower center part of my back suddenly explodes in agony. I look down and there's a massive rock laying at my feet. And I realized that I had just been assaulted. By the time I got to my <laughs> by the time I got to my house and examined my back in a mirror, the bruise was about the size of a basketball and was already turning black. Even eight. This guy got this guy had a rock the size that of a basketball throwing. I looked down. What's this all <laughs> Event eight. I woke up outside about three in the morning. I was laying next to four graves on the property. What the fuck? This is a huge jump. Turning black. Turning black. Event eight. I woke up outside about three in the morning. I was laying next to, to the four graves on the property. The night was awfully cold, but I awoke up soaking in sweat. We lived there for so long that I have many events to share that just happened like these, processing it, and I will have discussions in the future about all of them. It is really hard for me to talk about this stuff without re-traumatizing myself. 
but my <laughs> friends and families are encouraging me to share my experiences this person with like-minded people so I can try to find peace. the story, waking up drunk in the middle of their property in a field. And that was the tale <laughs> of the Bell Witch Haunting. And that was the story that this guy told at his first AA meeting. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, he was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> A rock. <laughs> it's just a dude just drunk as shit uh, on moonshine running around tobacco fields with his aunt and uncles holding shotguns and shooting at some poor woman across the river trying to collect rocks. I, I yeah, I, I do. Okay, what are takeaways? I love how he says, like, he got hit in the back with a rock. And you're like, cool, that's fine. Fine, fine, whatever. You got hit in the rock. Then he looks down and says, like, it's the size of a basketball. Who the fuck could throw a rock that big? And then your thing would be if you got hit with something like that thrown at you, you'd be like, I was assaulted. Hey, I'm no, assaulted. I'm crippled. But here's like the thing. at that point. He woke up, so I'm sure there's plenty of people but who have I'm, gotten in that moment, dude. blackout drunk and then woke up and had a huge bruise on themselves. But honestly, gotta be witches. <laughs> <laughs> so this sounds actually so close to like the Salem witch trials, where really what it turned into, they were letting essentially kids like pretend who were pretending to be like under the spell of witches and all the men who are just fed up with some of the women in the town are like, witch! And then they just go and drown her. This just sounds like they got too drunk. They messed around and like, ah, damn witch. Like, well, that's so funny. Cause like, that's like keeping sense of white guilt, blaming it on native spirits mm -hmm, too. True. I mean, yeah. like, let's say, so like they, like, okay, so I'll, I'll play the opposite side there just for a piece of it, which would be like, Ancient burial grounds, they think it's part of that. Cool. They had arth ar archaeologists. I did arthropologists. I think I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> you study insects? Out there. You study insects? Cool. We got a Native American grave over here. Could you like ID it for us? So like, okay, that lore makes sense. Yeah. The problem is the story doesn't connect it anymore. It's just like we think it's Indians and then there's a white person in a gown rolling down a hill. It's like that yeah, it doesn't connect It almost sounds like all. they're trying to say like, I don't know, maybe the tribe that lived there had like a witch in yeah, the so, tribe. So if like it was... you were saying the matriarch of the tribe is now haunting them because yeah. they, you know, this person disrespects. They started with indian sites. folklore and it ended somewhere completely different and got the moonshine so it's like, i don't i don't the threads don't the threads Do don't we connect. know anything more about this the witch's cave or what the local that was it. thing is and there's that. a rock that you go talk on and saying like i'm right here witch like, yeah that sounds like uh just this town's version of bloody mary yeah. like yes yes yeah well <laughs> I don't believe in the, the candy man. I don't believe. <laughs> oh, we're fine then. But I will say this. You were just assaulted. <laughs> the scariest, the scariest thing of this that would freak me the fuck out, especially if I was drinking, is if you're in the woods and you hear a woman screaming horrifically and it stops. Okay, yeah, I'd be scared. I don't know if I'd yeah. point a shotgun at. I, I mean, actually probably would. Honestly, I'd, gone, I'd go towards that voice if the other group is a bunch of guys <laughs> with shotguns. <laughs> well, if you're with that group, maybe you're okay. <laughs> Still might choose the other group on that one. <laughs> That's true. What is the scariest sound you could hear out in the woods? Well, to be fair, I think a blood curdling scream anywhere is jolting and not something Well, it's like that weird thing where you don't <laughs> want to go towards it, but you're kind of drawn to it out of curiosity. In our next episode, we're gonna have blood curdling <laughs> screams from random places, the library, the hospital, <laughs> the school. Where's the most terrifying place to have a blood curdling scream? And the most awkward. It's a fantastic experiment. <laughs> the public bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I was assaulted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the most horrifying sound? Oh. I don't know. I, I think I might go with a blood curtain. It's just the most jolting. Especially, the, I, I thought they mentioned something about like gurgling noise, like somebody got I mean, their I throat feel like slit. That could also be like a fox. Like a fox that <laughs> makes a pretty jolting sound. What does the, the fox the say? <laughs> I'm not wrong with that. I've been assaulted. <laughs> Spirits and ghost stories motto. I've been assaulted. Are you guys ready for this? This is Seth's segment now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is doing... scary things in the news. <laughs> <laughs> I've been assaulted. <laughs> This is crazy the news. I told you it's the motto of spirits and ghosts. Told you I've been assaulted. Probably it's at the on the screen. I can't read that. I don't have my glasses. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. 
we're gonna edit this out for a very long time. That's a tiny ass text. How am I supposed to read that? That is not the that old, tiny. The only letter. Oh yeah. Okay, I I can read. <laughs> I can read the headline, but the only letter I got right on the I exam is the giant E, and you expect me to read that? It's my left side, too. That's my blind side. You should have switched seats. <laughs> That's still beyond my blind side. <laughs> hmm. All right. So scary stuff in the news. That's what we're this talking about. This is actually about. Uh, a very recent story. Oh, thanks. I have it here now. <laughs> this is much easier to read six inches away from my face than five feet. Uh, so this story was written on uh, the 31st of August, so just a couple days ago. And the headline is... <clears throat> oh, that's the wrong one. Hold up. Psychic one. Like, Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, well, fine. I guess I'll go with this one. This one was pretty cool. So this was a few days ago. The headline is man looking for psychic gives no contact info <laughs> as a real medium will quote nowhere to apply. <laughs> uh, and so this man literally just made a billboard that says psychic one, psychic wanted you know where to apply <laughs> <laughs> wait is that what i have shared on the screen no not on well you. damn that's, it that's, 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 a, that's <laughs> the next one that's the actual scary one this one was more like sort of paranormal related hold on hold on we're gonna pull that one up too because like that way people can like <laughs> i just find it hilarious and so the company I'll that like everybody emails sussy now <laughs> <laughs> my contact info is not up there but they'll know where to apply <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> guys don't worry i will edit this out because uh, here, here, here it is so yeah, wow man looking for psychic gives no contact info <laughs> as real medium <laughs> will quote nowhere to apply I mean, okay are they wrong they aren't wrong and see here's the thing so the company that like owns the billboard um they said that this man just called in I guess gave them like credit card info or whatever in order to um, pay the rather large sum of money to put up a billboard, but did not want his contact info. And they thought, all right, come on, man, you joking with us? And he said no, that he wanted a real psychic to contact him. So it is either a man who's been burned by a fake psychic <laughs> but in the past or he is just so committed to the bit that they Honestly, couldn't tell he was I respect. I love when people do billboards for only personal gain. Like it's, <laughs> oh, it, but is it personal gain if his contact info isn't up there? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's literally the bit. most personal gain. Whether he getting... gets a psychic or not, that's a good bit. <laughs> he stuck with it too. Well, like, so what do you commitment. think? Do you think it's a bit or do you think it's a man who's actually I looking think it's, for a I psychic? I think it's both. You think it's both? I think it's a bit that he just committed to. And like, so I think he wanted, I think he wanted a psychic, but then at some point it becomes like, it, it evolves past it. Like, I feel like there was, there's a story here that we really need to know about. He got burnt on something and maybe it was a bit at first that he did with his friends about a psychic. And then it kept getting escalated to the point that he decided to do a billboard. I want to know that whole story. Like, how the hell do you go, do you wake up one day and be like, I want to spend all the money on a billboard? Or was there like, was there a bad breakup? Did he lose a football game bet? Like, I want to well, know. I mean, that, now we're getting into why he would need a psychic. Yeah, Honestly, okay, that's cool. Who knows? So you think it's better we don't know? Yeah. The mystery of the billboard guy. Well, I don't think we ever will because no one knows where to find him and get the story. Well, for that one. Say no one. <laughs> yeah, true. for that one person out there. <laughs> actually knows what's happening. So, guys, that was uh, Scary Things in the News Part uh, 1. You got Part 2. <laughs> yeah, here's the actual scary one. That Which is just what a actually fun happened. paranormal one. Uh, so, Are headline. from England? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn Brits <laughs> over there. Just, what are they doing? Uh, so, this one isn't quite as recent, but still uh, pretty close. About a month ago on 4 August. Headline is, mum forced to flee home after, quote, demon scratch daughter and quote puts fingers down throat it's real captivating just with the headline <laughs> this might relate back to that uh scary uh stuff in the news that you had about that 
hotel in Oklahoma City where the ghosts like to <laughs> assault. <laughs> Again, back to the motto of spirits and ghost stories. I've been uh, <laughs> guys, you need to watch the episode. That was the greatest uh, scary things I've ever found. The, the Oklahoma City Thunder dedicate that one year they went to the playoffs to a ghost that would rape the opposing team. The ghost name was F.A. It's fantastic. It's a thing. They're thinking about doing a movie about it. I'm going to revisit that story in the future. <laughs> that Will you actually go visit the story? I would love to ask. I, dude, the, the fact that it's real enough for basketball players, like, I can't sleep in my room by myself because of F.A. That's kind of funny. That's, that's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Um, where were we at? What were we talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. I will go through right, the ghost. actual story here uh, about this poor English family that's being kicked out by a ghost that's putting their fingers down their throat. So, but their own or the ghost's fingers? I guess we'll get into I think that. They're putting but... their fingers down the ghost's throat. It's kind of the opposite. No, I'm, it's not the they're ghost. Getting the better it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was saying the ghost could be like forcing their own fingers down their throat. So it's just Casper in the corner just going bulimic and sticking his own <laughs> fingers down his throat? Well, no, no. The ghost would be like taking your hands and putting <laughs> your own fingers down your throat. <laughs> Get you like that? <laughs> Just the worst kind of bully. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a bully. I don't think it was that, okay. but oh. it is up to your interpretation because I don't really think they say. Okay. Well, it looks like we got some pictures. So. All right. So. A traumatized family have been forced to flee their home after being attacked by a demon. Petrified Lauren Roth, her husband, and their two young kids have been living in a caravan on their driveway after being left, quote, scratched and bruised. Is this Lauren Roth right here? That's a real questionable left hand that guy's got. Uh, <laughs> yes, that is Lauren Roth and her husband, Stuh. He just says S T E. Stuff. <laughs> oh my Can you God, say that true. in a British accent? I cannot. Yeah, me either. I feel like it was probably Steve and they forgot to. <laughs> oh my God, it is. Stuff. S T E. It's stuff. Wow. Uh, but they've been left scratched and bruised by what she believes in is, is an enraged spirit. The poltergeist has reportedly been slamming doors and repeatedly turning lights on and off. But the final straw came when Lauren felt like, quote, someone stuck their finger down my throat. The 30 year old who lives in the property uh, in Middlesbrough since November says her daughter saw a man in the mirror. And her husband, who originally thought it was all nonsense, is now terrified. And look at stuff. You got the picture up there. He's a man's man. He doesn't get terrified. Especially with, look, look at that grip. Like, you know, <laughs> the hand is. It really is. Big situation. You can also see the nip through that picture, too. She's fake. Back to nipples. <laughs> Full circle, look, everybody. Look, guys, guys. Although, like, do you trust somebody that has a face like that? Because it looks like she's gotten a I F also don't done. trust that it wasn't just stuff. Sticking his <laughs> finger down her throat. She was sleeping? What do you think, Matt? It did, didn't say if she was sleeping. Nah, I just, I, yeah, I, I don't really trust. Uh, but Lauren stuff. got a ghost hunting uh, husband and wife duo uh, in a desperate bid. Hey. To, two, two for one. G -force. Two for one. G Force is here. G Bust. No, G Bust, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a desperate bid to give the ghost the boot. But they were also attacked, and so this duo instructed the mom to, quote, never return. <laughs> so, essentially, what happened is this daughter's getting scratched and bruised, oh, shit. and then the mom feels like her, you know, she has a finger stuck down her throat. Their doors are slamming, lights are being turned on and off. They bring in, essentially, Ed and Lorraine Warren. I, I don't know their actual names, but essentially, you know, a ghost fighting husband and wife duo who they come in. Uh, the husband gets scratched as they're going in. They claim they can see some shadow at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. And they tell, you know, Lauren Roth and her husband, never return to this house. Hand over the keys. That's a good gig that they got going. Right? On. That's what I'm oh, saying. you're totally haunted. You got to leave and leave this property to us. It is just us. a scam, much like Ed and Lorraine Warren were. Uh just to get people out of their house and buy them at cheap because no one wants to buy the haunted, you know, house on the block. 
As you can tell, uh, he doesn't like Ed or Larry Warden. Coral Steve. <laughs> Yeah, fingers Steve down his stuff. throat. <laughs> Dude, Steve, he's doing Steve pretty well. From Middlesbrough. I think he's in on this joke. He's probably like scratching his daughter and then going to his wife. Just <laughs> <laughs> Why is that where your mind goes? Like you wake up in the night and you just go, blah. I just don't trust a man named Stu. <laughs> of all the things for a ghost to do, just put some fingers down his throat. Do ghosts even have fingers? Is that the most unsettling thing a ghost could do? It's what, stick fingers down my throat? Because, like, that alarms you the most of anything a ghost could horribly well, do to you. Well, if it's what Matt described, that he's grabbing my hand and doing it, <laughs> yes, I would say that's probably hey, the most If it's disturbing. my hand, I would know, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> should, should they assume that it's just fingers? <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> could have been a ghost penis. <laughs> it really could have been. Oh, uh, the Brett Weinstein ghost. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, so, anyways, if you live in England and uh, beware, think stuff. you're haunted, never return. Call these people; they'll buy your house. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, this was your first time on the show. What did you think of it? Loving it. Need more rum. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> Seth. It's the first time watching too. It, it's amazing. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on part two of Fifty Two. We'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye.